it would not let me sign in for no reason at all. It was like messed up. I'm making coffee, but uh, let's debate a little bit. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. You're talking about Mark with Matthew, with Luke and stuff. And they sort of did copy off each other, but they were the witnesses as well as seeing Yeshua being crucified on the cross. Now, take that into consideration, all right? But, you know, it was sort of copied in a way because Matthew was like, he did things chronically, like in a chronicle order and stuff, but he did sort of copy off of Mark, per se. This copy's going to suck, but oh well. And um, so did Luke. But Constantine's mom decided what went into the Bible and stuff like that. So during that time when Rome was taken over and everything, the Jews, they made the Jews fled and stuff. And this is where the Muslims come in at. God bless them. They um, came and protected the Jews. They like hit out with the Muslims and stuff. A lot of people don't know that about history, but they did and stuff. That's how the Muslims are always protective over the Jews and stuff like that. But anyway, Constantine's mom came in and she made up these churches. And what's so weird? I'm getting to the point. I'm sorry. I'm making coffee. What's so weird is that Constantine's mom went to a Yeshua's tomb, supposedly, to the church, whatever, to the temple. And she's like, oh, this is so cool because, she, you know, I don't know if y'all knew or not, but the calendar was only 10 months before they put July and August in there because they had to have, certain people had to have their names in there because they wanted to be popular Hint, hint. So they got Jesus' birthday wrong upon him. But my point being is, supposedly during all that time when Constantine and the reigns took over, like, you know who I'm talking about, like Nero and all that stuff, the Muslims ended up getting the keys to Jesus too. Still to this day. And then it was switched back. Now these Muslims that have the key to Jesus too, there's only two keys. One is broken. They are kin are descendants from Prophet Muhammad. Now, story be told, hearsay, there was two Muhammads because the father had two wives, well, three wives. He had two different sons by two different wives and he, he had forgotten that he named one son Muhammad because he had already grown up and stuff like that. So my question to you, is that true? Because if it's true, then it changes everything about the Islam religion, does it not? Did you hear anything? Yeah, I heard everything. I'm sorry you can't see my face. I'm making coffee. <laughs> okay. Let's start at the very beginning. Okay, what's the very beginning? Why do you believe the authors of the Gospels were eyewitnesses? Huh? Why do you believe the authors of the Gospels were eyewitnesses? Uh, because they was. They were supposed to... Okay. Let's put it like this. Do you have physical proof that Prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad, is alive? Do you have physical proof? That wasn't my question. I'm asking you a question. It's got nothing to do. Can you answer my question, please? Why do I feel that they were copied? Are you sure you need coffee? You might need like a hot chocolate or something. You don't need any more my caffeine. My coffee, dude. Look, my fridge went out. And you I'm don't, you don't need any more caffeine. caffeine. Okay. That's my coffee. You don't need any more caffeine. Are you sure about that? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, what was the question again so I can answer it properly? Why do you believe the authors of the Gospels were eyewitnesses? Because they was. They was his followers. No, why do you he believe? Wanted, he wanted them to put it down. Okay, let's do this. He... He really existed. He truly did exist. That wasn't my Honest question. God, I'm answering the question. Give me a second. No, you're not answering my question. Way, but they were witnesses because he wanted people to know what he did. No, but why do you believe what they? The, no, no, but why do you believe they were witnesses? What do I think? What? Why do you? Okay. Why do you think Mark was a witness? Ah, 
I don't really feel that Mark was, honestly. So Mark wasn't a witness. He was a witness. You're, then it makes the Bible not, the rest of it not really be true because no one saw him at the tomb when they went three days later. It was empty and nobody saw him. Like Matthew and Luke said that he was seen by both Marys. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you agree Mark wasn't a witness? I would say that Mark is a true witness. Mark is a true witness or isn't a true witness? I believe that Mark is a true witness and Matthew and Luke just copied what Mark did and they added to it. So was Mark a disciple of Jesus? I believe so, yes. No. Why? Mark wasn't a disciple of Jesus. Why wouldn't you say he was a disciple? He was a... He had 12 disciples. Name them off. You name them all. Why should I name them all? Oh, geez. He had Judas. There was two Judases. One was he hung himself after he sold Jesus. Uh, two Judases, James, Big James. And then um, Judases, James, Peter. You can't really say Paul was. You really cannot say Paul was because right, I'll name I'll, I'll name you for, I'll name them for you. Huh? I'll name them: Judas Iscariot, Peter, James the Great, Andrew, Simon, John, Matthew, Bartholomew, <laughs> Thomas, Philip, James, Matthias, and James the Less. James the Less. God bless. I didn't him. hear Mark. Mark, wasn't he one of the guards? Not exactly sure, to be honest with you. And that's a God's honest truth. I haven't read the Bible in a long time, and that's truth. <laughs> right. That's so there was so there was no disciple called Mark. So we can agree disciple wasn't a Mark wasn't a disciple. How do we know that Mark didn't come in with Constantine's mom? Didn't when she showed up. What? Okay, Constantine had a lot to do with the Holy Bible. I'm not talking no, forget about that. Christian forget Bible. that. Forget that. Mark was the first gospel that was written. It's a biography of Jesus. Yes, I gotta plug my phone in because it's gonna die. But anyway, we go can ahead. agree. We can agree he wasn't a um, disciple. So he's not an eyewitness. No, but he had to have copied from somebody else. What if Mark was just put in above Matthew and Luke, and he copied from them? Right. Was Matthew a disciple of Jesus? Yes, he was. He was even a tax collector, for God's sakes, and his father was rich. Why did Matthew copy from Mark? What if Mark copied from Matthew? Because Mark was written first. Mark could have been the person who was the writer that Jesus wanted to write. He could have been part of the scriptures of the New Testament, starting it out. Well, he didn't witness Jesus. Peter, you got to remember back then in the old days, some of the people were illiterate, didn't write. And the only Mark, that but, no, but, but look, look. right is because Mark, Mark wasn't a disciple of Jesus. Why is a disciple of Jesus copying from somebody who's not a disciple of Jesus? Okay, why is Matthew and Luke and all of them copying from Mark, right? But changing yes. up the story at the end saying that Jesus was seen risen from the tomb. Is that no, what no. asking? It doesn't matter what they write. It doesn't matter what they write. First of all. It does matter what they write. But well, let's establish, no, no. Well, let's establish who they are. So I'm asking the question again. Why would a disciple of Jesus need to go to a man who wasn't a disciple of Jesus and copy what he writes about what Jesus said and did? Why would a disciple of Jesus need to do that? Maybe because they weren't all fully there at his crucifixion. The crucifixion had nothing to do with it. Yes, it did in a way. Matthew, You've already said started, Mark wasn't at... You started this whole conversation with Mark wasn't at the crucifixion. Mark, okay. Mark, I don't believe there. The only people supposedly at the crucifixion, Joseph was for a small little bit, and he gathered the guy. How do you know who was at the crucifixion? Who was there at the crucifixion? How do you know? I wouldn't know 
but it's mentioned in the Bible that Mary, his mom, and Magdalene. Where does it say that? Mary, Mary, and Peter. Where does it mention that? Read the Bible. Have you read the Bible? Yes. Simon was supposedly who helped him carry his cross up the... Uh, How do you know what Jesus supposedly did and what he said and where he went? Only one of them is true, isn't it? Come on, think well, about it. How do you know what Jesus did, said, went? How do they you know? Had eyewitnesses. They wrote it down in their books. Who, who were the witnesses? Oh, geez. Matthew, Mark, uh, Matthew, Luke... If Matthew's a witness, why is he copying from someone? So if Matthew's a witness, why is he copying from a non-witness? Because maybe he saw it differently. Why is he copying from somebody who wasn't? It's like you go to a party, yeah, Tiger. There's a party. Yeah. You go to the party. I don't go to the party. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then you come to ask me what happened at the party. Does that make any sense? You were there. I wasn't there. What are you asking me for? Right. It doesn't make no sense. So you witnessed Jesus. I didn't witness Jesus. You come to ask me what Jesus said and did. That doesn't make any sense. In a way, right. But in another way, maybe it's because I have their part in the Bible. I don't know. All I know is that I know you're probably thinking this is the worst debate of all, and it probably is to everybody out there. But my point is Constantine's mom had a lot to do with what went into the Bible and what didn't go into Constantine's the mom yeah. had nothing to do with what we're talking about. Yeah. No. But it has a lot to do with the books that went into the Bible. It doesn't a lot matter. Of the King James Bible. But that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Let's stick to the point here. Why is a witness going to ask a non-witness what was what happened? What if he was a guard and he saw what happened? What if he stood there with Mary and Mary and saw what happened? What? Mark. We're talking about Mark, right? Where Matthew copied off Mark. What if Mark was there at the actual crucifixion with Mary and Mary and saw what happened? But you said Mark wasn't at the crucifixion. Well, somebody had to be to write it. Well, you said Mark wasn't there. Well, there was only two that I know of. It was Simon and Peter. Simon helped carry the cross. Well, you said Mark wasn't there. How do we know not Mark wasn't there? There was a guard that they got close to that got saved before Jesus had passed. Well, but, but, the gospel, but the gospel of Mark speaks about Jesus and his parables. Only his disciples had access to his parables. Yes. So how does Mark know the parables of Jesus? And why is Matthew asking Mark what Jesus meant by his parables? I'll have to go look that up. That is a good question. It doesn't okay. make any sense. And even the teachings don't make any sense. Like, for have example, you read have you read the for example, Thomas? what was the sign? What was the sign that Jesus promised to the adulterous generation that they asked for? What was the sign he said he would give them? Come down in the sky with the horse and the sword. No. What? Say it. No, like, he said. He, he said. No sign shall be given. No finish. In, in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus says, "No sign shall be given," and he gets in his boat and goes. Well. The truth is nobody knows when he's going to return. Not even Jesus himself, just God. No, the point is, the adulterous, Jesus says in the Gospel of Mark, this adulterous nation asks for a sign, basically of who he is. And he says, no sign shall be given, gets in his boat and leaves. Okay. In the Gospel of Matthew, what's the sign for this adulterous generation? None, apparently. No, in the Gospel of Matthew, a sign is added. So in Mark, no sign. In Matthew, no sign but the sign of Jonah. As Jonah was inside the belly of the fish three days, three nights, so the Son of Man should be in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights, basically predicting his death.
death and resurrection. Who did Jesus appear to after his resurrection? Say that again. Who did he appear to? Mary Magdalene. Did he appear to this adulterous generation? No, he only appeared to Mary Magdalene. So what happened to the prophecy? Huh? What happened to the prophecy? What do you mean the prophecy? Which Jesus said? told the adulterous generation that the sign he will give them to prove he is who he claims to be is that he will rise after three days from the belly of the earth. He did. Why, didn't he, why did he not fulfill that and appear before the adulterous generation and tell them that um, I'm here? Told you. He uh, didn't do that. He did. He walked for 40 days. He never appeared to the adultish generation to prove, fulfill his prophecy. Okay, why do you say that when he did and he walked for 40 days? Where, where, did, he appear, where did he appear to the adultish generation? Remind me. Which chapter? Verse. He All appeared right. to his disciples. When Jesus rose, right, from the tomb, yeah. he appeared to Mary Magdalene. And he said, go back and tell them that I have risen. Tell who? Tell his disciples that he had risen. Right. And who did he who did he say he was going to appear to? Who he was going to appear to? He was going to... He, As he a sign. Magdalene, right? No. He says, this adulterous generation asks for a sign. No sign should be given but the sign of Jonah. Okay, but then you asked if he showed it uh, about afterwards and he walked for 40 days after he had risen and then did he appear to the adulterous generation you're talking about an adulterous generation in the gospel of matthew yes when the, the when the pharisees and teachers of the law asked for a sign oh, Jesus. and he said there will be a sign he, he said, said no in mark he says there'll be no sign in yes. matthew and luke he says the sign of jonah but yeah, he never fulfills it. Where he was in the belly of the whale for three days and all of that, yeah. Right, so he never fulfilled that prophecy. So it's a fail. So it's either a false prophecy or a failed prophecy. So basically what you're trying to say is Jesus never really filled that prophecy of showing himself again, right? I don't believe you made that claim, no. And you don't think that he had risen and showed himself to anybody from the tomb, right? No. So you don't think that he was even crucified on the cross and died for our sins? No. Why? Why? I know you're Muslim, but y'all believe in Jesus, right? Peace yeah, be well, we don't believe he died for our sins or was crucified or was resurrected. Oh, okay, then explain the Shroud of the Terran. Why? why the Shroud of the Terran... It's supposed it's to be proof that Jesus was crucified on that cross. The Shroud of Turin is a fake. And they have done like a... It's a fake. I'm going to ask you a question. If Jesus predicted he was going to rise in three days, why was none of his disciples waiting for him to rise? Because I don't think they believed it. Oh, after watching him raise the dead and heal the lepers and cure the sick, and walk on water and feed the 5,000, this they doubted? Because I don't think they believed it. Oh, okay. No. And when Mary Magdalene came and told them he's risen, what did they say? <coughs> they didn't believe him. And, and so did they, did, they sound like, did they sound like men who was waiting for him to rise? No, not really. Did they sound like men who had an idea that he could rise? No, they were worried about carrying on the congregation of the church. No, they were not expecting him to rise. There they, 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 they was complete bewilderment when Mary Magdalene came running to him. They actually sent her away as a crazy woman. Yeah, and then they raced to the tomb, Peter and John. They went to the tomb, Peter and John. They found the tomb empty. And even then, they just went home. But he showed himself to her. It doesn't matter. The point I'm making is the disciples of Jesus was not waiting for a resurrection after three days. So what do you think that Matthew with the Jonah being in the well for three days, metaphorically speaking? We just didn't say those words. Okay. 
So, <clears throat> excuse me for that. I've had a little cold going on. If this is how you believe and everything like that, then I really want to know something. Then why even have Jesus in the Quran? You just see him as prophet? That's yeah. it? Just yes. Him. You don't see him as the son of God or anything like that. No. But Isaiah, it says in the Old Testament, by the way, which I'm sure you know this, that there will come one who will be the son of God. And they were talking about Jesus. It talks about Jesus. And Jesus goes to the temple and he says it's already been prophesied about him being crucified on the cross and everything like that. That everything. Did, did, oh, sorry, do did the, did the Jews believe this? Just so the Jews can believe this. The Jews see Jesus as a Messiah. Was David, was David the son of God? Oh, Lord. Jesus is the son of God. And it says that. Is, is David the son of God? Well, no, David is the son of the what? Abraham, Solomon, and all of that. Isaac, all down that doesn't, line. Doesn't God say to David in the Bible, today I've begotten thee? Pretty much, yes. So David is his son. Isn't Israel the God, the son of God? Is what? Israel is a country. Jacob. Jacob. They all are, because if you really look at it, Adam is the son of God. If you really go down the line. So, of the okay. So what does being the son of God mean? Oh, Jesus. What about Mary, the Virgin Mary? She got pregnant. Gabriel came down and talked to her. Gabriel, the angel, came down and talked to her. What does to being the son of God mean? The circle of what? Son of God. The son of God mean? That his, that's his father. The son of God means that it's God's son. So Jacob is God's son and David is God's son. <coughs> so what's, what's so fantastic about that? We're all God's children. I agree. What's your problem then? So, so who does Jesus uh, say is the true God? The only true God. Because God wanted to come down himself and see what it was like living the life of the human life. Who is the only true God according to you? Who is the only true God according to you? What is the truth of what? Who is the only true God according to you? God, Almighty Father up above, the only one, the creator of all creations, nobody else but him. Jesus. So the only true God is the Father? Yes. Is Jesus God? I'm having afflictions with that, but I, in a way with the Eucharist and the Immaculate Conception and stuff like that, I sort of, yeah, in a way, believe. Is it's, Jesus God? I can't say that he's, no, he's not, because he goes, you can't get through God except through me. And he even says, don't look at me as God. He even says that. So Jesus isn't God? No, I don't know. He's not God. Okay. So why? Why? what's the point of him being crucified? Crucified? To change salvation. To why? It, it, it's just a human sacrifice, isn't it? It's okay. Back then, let's, let's just look at it like this way, okay? In a hardship and hard times and stuff like that, when Israel was being taken over and stuff like that, people losing faith. Wouldn't you change it? Do you get what I'm saying? No. You why, why, why was Jesus crucified if he was just a man? For our sins. He died for our sins. Why would a man being crucified redeem our sin? Jesus was crucified because the Jews supposedly turned him over. No, but he was just a man. Well, how does crucifying a man? Because Jesus said he was the laws of Moses. And he told that to the high priest over in the, in the, the high rabbi. Excuse me. Forgive me. Jesus was just a man. How does crucifying him redeem the world of sin? Because back then, Romans crucified people for a lot of things. They did it as punishment and left them on the cross. Until well, but they what was the purpose of God crucifying Jesus, who was just a man? How did crucifying a man and killing a man, innocent man, 
redeem the world's sin. Do you know what happened when he was crucified? Don't you remember in the Bible? The earth shake, the temple fell. And the zombies came out of the ground. Yeah. You believe that? Yes, I believe that. The temple, well, obviously it's true because they're building a third temple. I mean, come on. Why, why do you believe, so you believe the walking dead came out of the ground? Because I did. How can you believe in miracles and angels and demons and stuff like that if you can't believe in miracles? So you believe in the walking dead going into all the towns and cities, yeah? Well, I don't believe in zombies or anything like that, but I believe the dead could be raised if Jesus comes back. No, but the Gospel of Matthew says that the, the saints rose from their tombs and ends at the sounds and cities. Do you believe that? The saints worship the what? What'd you say? The saints rose from their graves and entered into the towns and cities. Do you believe that? No. Honestly, I don't. No? So why do you believe there was an earthquake? There was an earthquake because the temple was destroyed and burned. Why do you believe there was an earthquake? Why do I believe there was an earthquake? Because there was an earthquake. Who tells you it was an earthquake? Okay, really, to be technical, if you really want to know the truth of how I believe it, he was a man of great illusion. That's the God's honest truth. That's why I'm having trouble in believing in which religion is truth or not. Do I believe what? he existed? Yes, I do believe he existed. But I believe he was the greatest illusion ever. Illusion? <laughs> what, what do you mean by illusion? I you really want to know why? At a time when a place needed to be saved and needed faith and stuff like that, I believed he could heal. Nothing is told about his childhood. Nothing, completely nothing. But you could go back and re you could read on Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, anything and everything you want to know. But why not Jesus? Why is his childhood, like, blotted out? Why? Because he went to go study monks and stuff like that. And back then, Buddha and monks had that little what? If you go to it now, they have like that healing stuff. Okay? It is told that underneath the Vatican that there is... I'm changing it up a little bit, but I'm making a point. There's this shrine of the devil underneath the Vatican. And I'm like, how can that be? If this church is built on what Peter said, the scriptures... And all of that, how can that be? Why would you do that? But I believe he was the greatest illusionist of all. Prophet, yes, because plenty of things he told and did happen. But I don't believe he really was on the cross. I believe it was someone else, and I believe it was Simon. That's what I believe, if you really want the truth. So you don't believe Jesus was crucified? I don't believe what? You don't believe Jesus was crucified? Nope. So you don't believe he was resurrected? No. Then you can't be a Christian. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Christian relies on the death and resurrection. I realize that it's death. <laughs> eh? But I think. No, but Christianity relies on the death and resurrection of Jesus. If you don't believe that, you're not Christian. How can you say that? How are you saved? I was baptized as a baby. I had Holy Communion. I had to remember the prayers and everything like that. Yeah, no, but why does that make you saved? Huh? Why does that make you saved? Because that's how the Catholic Church does it, right? Catholic Church believes Jesus was crucified. Why do you care what the Catholic Church say? Excuse me. I guess because... That's how I was taught up. Taught. It, yeah, but it doesn't make it true just because somebody told you it. I don't know. Maybe because I'm confused. Because the one thing that makes me confused about Islam, and I really do believe that Islam is a beautiful religion. I honest to God believe that. Is that Prophet Muhammad, you hear this thing where not even all of felt or city or he was a prophet or whatever that he he didn't see him as a prophet that he was a false prophet that that was written in the quran and i was like because i didn't get that far into the quran to read it and when i saw that video and it's like it wasn't just one video a couple on it i was like so tiger 
never a can prophet. I, can I have you some advice? But he wasn't a prophet. Tiger, can I have you some advice? Yeah. Stop watching David Wood. Huh? Stop watching David Wood. Who's David Wood? Well, that's who you're getting this this nonsense from. Or Shimonian or Christian Prince nonsense. You're watching anti-Islamic stuff. Whatever you're what what are you watching? What's your what's your um the video or whatever you watch? What's it called? Uh well besides you <laughs> and your funny debates. No, no, well, you got this information about Muhammad being a false prophet according to the oh, Quran. Uh, Ali Dawa. God bless him. It, it wasn't him. But when you subscribe to some videos and stuff like that, you know how you have these other recommendations or anything? that. So, so what was the video up? called you watched? Huh? What was the video called that you watched? Oh, I can't remember it. It was a short. It was a short. It, re it really was. It was one of those shorts that you have that it came out. So up. you're basing the, real the reliability of the Prophet Muhammad Peace and bless me upon him on a YouTube show. Yeah, it was like a cartoonish like thing. The so, because this cartoon short said something. He was an ex Muslim. Oh, can I offer you some advice, Tiger? Yeah. Never expect an ex to say nice things about you. Why? Because that's why you're the, your ex. He was a. Okay, look, I don't talk to my. Even though I was engaged to a Muslim, okay? I wasn't going for the religion to be with him or anything like that. A lot of people were like, have assumed it got that wrong and everything. Um, my point being is the person mm -hmm. I saw the video from was on YouTube. Don't even know him from Adam. You know, it's just I saw the video and he was an ex Muslim and said, this is why he doesn't believe. Okay, I know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. The guy's name is Nabil Qureshi. Okay, Nabil Qureshi. Oh, so you he, 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 he died of cancer a few years ago. Nabil Qureshi, his name is. He's an Asian guy, yeah? He, he was never a Muslim. Uh huh. So he lied about that. Why? So once, once someone lies about their origin, yeah, you can be sure whatever they're telling you is lies. Or can't be relied upon. Right. You don't believe. You don't believe that. Why? Why are you? Why are you carrying a cross that you don't believe in? Huh? Why do you have a cross that you don't believe in? I do. You. You. You're not the. I do, but I. But I'm. It's. It's. It's complicated. Who's it's, on that cross? Who's on that cross? It, because you want to believe, but then when you. Read other stuff, it's like... Who's on the cross, Tiger? Who's on the cross? Yeshua. No, you said Simon. Okay. Speculation is, is that Jesus lived and it was Simon who got crucified instead of Jesus. So Simon's on that cross then, according to you. According to me, it's Jesus, but... Well, it's not according to you, because you don't believe Jesus was crucified. Huh? You don't believe Jesus was crucified? <sighs> okay, look, it's it looks like it, and it is going back and forth. Okay, but you gotta understand. Let me just respond to something. One second, one second. I gotta respond to this comment. Emmy Tones and uh, Nabil Karish, he was Asian, and he's dead, so I can't debate him. <laughs> Sorry, carry on, carry well, on. But he didn't sound Asian. Okay. In the video. That's what I'm saying. But. It's complicated. Because I do. But then when you read the Quran. And. Somebody. You said something that hit me hard. And that's why it changed my perspective. And it's like a sort of like. I'm upset because you said it, but it's the truth. Because you're like, you have these idols. Like, you pray to these idols, and God says, Allah says, God says, don't have these idols but me. No other idols but me. Don't worship these other idols but me. 
But when I'm praying the rosary, I'm Hail Mary, Mother of Grace. I'm praying to her because she's there. I'm looking up at her, Hail Mary, Mother of Grace, right? Holding my rosary, right? If you're Catholic, you would know. And then when I go to the church and there's a cross and Jesus is on it, depending on which Catholic church you go to and stuff, or there's a picture of him above and stuff. And I'm like, but if I'm actually praying to God, then why am I praying to Jesus? But then I think if in the Bible, Jesus says the only way to get to God is through me. But then when I look at the Islam religion, I'm like, but you're praying to God, straight to God, not to nobody else, but to God. How is that even possible? And then I look at the Jews and the Torah and they have God and they don't pray to Jesus and they don't pray to Mary. And I'm like, something's wrong. Like something is truly wrong because we're praying to these people. Why do I have to pray to Mary to get to Jesus, to get to God is how I'm looking at it. But I want to believe that this man died on the cross for my sins. You know what I'm saying? But I also want to pray to God and have a relationship with God and only with God and nobody else but God. Because I don't feel like I need to go through all of these other <laughs> idols or whatever you call it to get to God. But you guys have it easy. You go in, you pray, you pray to God. And in y'all's mistakes, you have calligraphy of uh, Allah, the most merciful, the greatest, and all that. God bless him. And stuff and everything. And I'm like, why can't our church have that? But yet we have all these pictures. And not only do we have Jesus, when you go to the Orthodox Catholic Church, you have Jesus and the disciples. And I'm like, well, who am I praying to? Do you understand how I feel the confusion? Because I grew up in that as a little girl. And then it's like I'm introduced to Islam. Islam, sorry, sorry, Islam. And then it's like, I'm very confused. And then you hear this thing, there was two Muhammads. One was good, one was bad. And then you hear this stuff like, Muhammad wasn't even a real prophet. And I'm like, I don't even know what to believe. Okay, let's deal with I that then. don't. Okay, let's deal with that. Muhammad wasn't a real prophet. So, you know, let's break that down. At least we can do one thing today. Right. Well, I think we've done one thing today. You know, Christianity is nonsense. Okay, well, I think we can agree on that. It's not reliable source of information. What it teaches you don't believe. So forget that. Okay. Right. Muhammad made a claim 1,400 years ago. He's a prophet of God. Yeah, agreed? Mm-hmm. Cool. And um, if he made this claim, what else could explain the claim? He could be lying. He could be crazy. Or he could be deceived. Agreed? Agree. Okay. Do you also agree that if he wasn't lying, crazy, or deceived, then he's telling the truth? Yeah. Okay. So when we look at the life of Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, um, he was known as al -Amin, the truth, the trusted. His character was known to, to tell the truth, not lie. Okay. He's married to the one, richest woman in Makkah. His uncle... The, his, his uncles are custodians of the Kaaba, so he has status in the city. Yeah? Why would he lie? Uh, sometimes to protect. Protect what? His family. Okay. By calling the people... Now, remember what he had to do. In the city of Mecca, he, um, it was a city of pagan worship of idol worship and his first responsibility was to go down and tell them to stop worshiping these pagan idols and to worship the god of abraham this was his first job and for that the, the, these these pagan idols attracted pilgrims to mecca which the meccan quraish they used to trade with because they were merchants so this was a source of income for the city so right he's so he's basically gone down and told them to do something that's going to cut off the income for the city. This is basically because if you get rid of the pagan idols, the pilgrims won't come, and then they won't come and trade with the merchants, and this is how Mecca makes its money. It was a, a trade place. 
This is the first thing he had to do. So when the people heard he was doing this and the leaders of Makkah heard he was doing this, first thing they did was offer him what he wanted to stop. Money, women, power, status, whatever. Just stop doing what you're doing. But he didn't. He continued. So then they um, they started persecuting him and his followers. And they ended up being exiled in the desert to die. No one could sell bread to them. No one could trade with them. No one could marry their daughters to them. The Muslims were basically yellow starred like the Jews of Nazi Germany. Basically, you can't do anything with these people. Right. Why would you keep up the lie? Why would people follow him for this lie? It, it, it makes no sense. And <clears> then <throat> there, there was an occasion when um, his baby died, baby boy. And um, there was an eclipse at the time. And the people were saying, look, even the sky goes dark, you know, because his baby's dying. And uh, the Prophet Muhammad turned around and said, this is just natural things. The sun and the moon rise for nobody set or do this for nobody. These are just signs from Allah. So in the sense of if he was a, a liar or a charlatan, at this moment, he should have taken advantage of the people. And said, yeah, yeah, you see, I told you if this is if this is his kind of motive if this is what he's trying to do we don't see that though we don't see it so this is this is to do with motive why why would he lie yeah why would he lie um and then the second thing is how would he lie all right you know what just hit didn't you say in the Bible in one of your videos, did you not say in the Bible in one of your videos that Jesus mentioned Muhammad, peace be upon him? Did no. you not say that in one of no. your Look, understand that. After me, and it is said that his name was Muhammad. The tiger, tiger, tiger. I don't need the Bible to tell me that Muhammad is a prophet. Yeah, I don't I don't trust the reliability of it in the first place. So right. I don't need it. There's no validation required. The Quran and Muhammad Sallallahu and Islam stands alone. It doesn't need any validation. What it, what what you could do though is if you're a Christian or a Jew, you could see in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the sign of prophethood. You could see this the, the, the same uh, teaching that God is one and worship him. As Abraham taught, as Jacob taught, as Moses taught, as Jesus taught, all the prophets taught the same thing. God is one, worship him. So anyway, so we've, we've established that he had no reason to lie and, uh, the he, and he had no character to lie. And then, now we're going to demonstrate he had no capacity to lie because, go on. Wasn't he poisoned? Wasn't he poisoned? And he said he felt like his uh, throat, like whatever... Mm -hmm. Being cut out, heart, mm -hmm. and... life force, yeah. Come on. So, H how long? How long did this poison take to kill him? I'm not. Oh, it took a while. It was like torture. It was like pain. From what? No, four years. He said it felt like his throat was his heart was coming through his throat or something like that. I don't know what it was. So, listen, it's just a moot point. Okay, so the next thing is, did he have the capacity to lie? Could he have made up the Qur'an? Well, he was illiterate. So how could he have produced this linguistic miracle? Do you have to be smart to lie? I mean, come on, people lie all the time. Where did you get the information from? Well, I mean, it doesn't take a smart person to lie, though, does it? What? For 23 years to keep making it up. Okay. Speaking about the prophets of the past, where do you get the information yeah. from? As an illiterate man. Didn't you say that he couldn't read bright and he was blind? Wasn't that what was said about the prophet Muhammad? He was illiterate. Yes, he was blind. He's illiterate. Okay. Illiterate. Oh, so he couldn't read or write. Right. Yeah. But he so, wasn't blind. He was not blind. No. Okay. So no, he was that's not funny. It's me trying to get it straight. Honest to God. It's, you know, peace be upon him. It's, I'm not being funny. It's just, 
when you hear so many things, you want to get it right, right? No, he wasn't blind. Okay. So he, he was illiterate, and he um, he is the, the one who recited, uh, revealed this Qur'an over a 23-year period. And when the Arabs sent their poets to listen to the Qur'an being recited to find out where he's getting his words from, where is he getting his information from, they, they, they said it's sorcery. So they, they couldn't understand how can this illiterate man all of a sudden become with the most exquisite language, this exquisite Qur'an, where is he getting the information from? And that was their conclusion, it's sorcery. So when we marry this all up together, um, he didn't lie. He couldn't lie. So he had no motive to lie, no reason to lie. Um, he didn't behave like he was lying. And he didn't have the capacity to lie. Not even anything about it. Well, he couldn't have. If he prophesied stuff and it came true, then no, he couldn't have. Right. So <laughs> he wasn't lying. Then what oh, else? Then a question here to the Quran, right? If he recited it and everything like that, did the original one, the scriptures, not the actual book, people tend, from what I've heard, didn't they burn up in a temple or, or a something and it was be rewritten again, but certain things were left out or something like that? See, now I know you have been watching anti-Islamic videos. I'm not supposed to learn anything when I don't even talk to you. Well, no, but you, you're watching anti-Islamic material and you said you wasn't when you are. Well, not all of it, but... No, you, know. no, you are. You watch David Wood. You're watching... Hey, who is David Wood? I don't even know who that is. One Ali... guy with glasses. Is that Ali Daba? Is that David Wood? No. Okay, then who's who's Ali Daba? What videos are you watching? You're not a stupid person. What videos are you watching? I don't know who David Wood... Who told you? Who told you about the Quran being burned? Who told you that? It was a short video, and I did not, honest to God, see who made that video. I just watched it. Mm. Good. Why are we back at this again? The reason we're back at it yeah, is that you, you, you watch a minute video, and you think you have information. Oh. Oh. That person that I sent you. That person said that jesus said god's name Elum, which is in the bible that that the picture was really allah alone was allah e-l-o-h-i-m but if you look it up and you look up jesus native language aramaic and then it says god in aramaic it says allah that's what i was that's what i sent you but i didn't send you the right screenshot i sent you believe in Allah would you care to mention anything at yeah I, when, when I did before I'll do now also uh, oh, Allah is taken the name from Alaka no, Alaka which is we use that word all the time we have the same God as the Arabs we believe in the same God in one God <coughs> so it's a paradox see the Christians believe in the uh, Trinity the you know, to have whatever that's supposed to mean, but it's a part of it is their their God, who's the JC we call him, but uh, <laughs> that so that's uh, not our belief at all. We we're not allowed to believe anything like that, and First. we're in better terms with the Christians generally than with the Arabs, generally speaking. But we have in common we believe in the same God. Right? As a matter of fact, speaking once to Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, the greatest rabbi of our generation, he said, Allah, that's the Arab, the Arab's God, the same God that we have. He wasn't afraid to talk about it. They have the same God. But Allah means God, the Alukah that we say, and uh, they believe in the one God who created the world. Was there an event that made the Muslims break away and change the name of God to whatever? Didn't change the name of God. It's Allah, that's the name of the God. Was they didn't break away from any. Why did they break away? They, they, they come from the children of Abraham, of Yishmael. We come from Yitzchak, and they come from Yishmael. So that's a Jew telling 
a Christian that Allah is the same God they believe in. Yeah, yeah same God. So Allah is the God of the Jews. They just use a different name. God of Abraham, same as we believe. So if you truly want to worship God, then the only way you can worship God is by following God's messengers. Because that's how God reveals about himself and how he wishes to be worshipped and how he guides you in this world. Um, and the problem you have, Tiger, you're not doing that. Right. So what you need to do is not to be... No matter about your upbringing or your conditioning or whatever it may be, once you recognize that God has sent a messenger, you need to hear that message. And when you hear the message of Islam that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi came with, it's beautiful. It's, it's healing. It gives you peace of mind, body, soul. There's nothing else can do it. it. It doesn't leave you with mysteries to solve. Everything is, subhanAllah, so straightforward. All God is saying is this in Islam. I created you weak, then we make you strong, and then we'll return you to weakness. Yeah, you're not perfect creation. You're going to sin. Allah says, you know, in the, in the hadith, uh, I think it's hadith Qudsi, if I'm wrong, that if this creation, humans, yeah, mankind, if it didn't sin, I would wipe them off the face of the earth and replace them with a creation that did. Why? Because Allah knows you're weak. Allah knows you've got enemy, shaitan, to twist you up, the distractions. And because you're weak and you have desires, that Allah knows that you may fall short. But Allah then says, just turn back. You make an error, turn back. Yeah? No one's asking for... See, this is a beautiful thing. See, this is the difference between Christianity. Basically, Paul says, you can't be perfect, therefore you need a savior. That's what Paul says. In Islam, Allah says, you can't be perfect, and I don't expect perfection. All I'm asking for is the best you got. SubhanAllah, the best you got. And if you fall short, I'm, I'm a merciful, and you just turn back, seek repentance, and I'll forgive you. You're muted. Let me ask you. This. Mashallah. Yeah, the Quran, yeah. Is that the right Quran? Because I have three of them. If you can't read, um, yeah, you can read that. But it's better to read a proper English one for you. I'm trying to get the thing straight on it, and it's like coming up backward. SubhanAllah. <laughs> yeah, I recommend the clear Quran and English Quran, but alhamdulillah. You recommend really what? Thing. Um, what do you recommend? The clear Quran, an English Quran. It's got English. And I know, but it's the English is condensed, kind of small because it's trying to fit the Arabic and the Tajweed and everything. Oh yeah, it doesn't do that very well at all. It like gets a lot of Arabic words wrong when you try to like translate it from Arabic to English. You're like, what the heck are they saying? Sometimes. Well, in the English, it's it's just going to be to the nearest meaning. To the nearest meaning. Tiger. Yeah, I'm listening. I was looking through it. Sorry. Why do you have to become a Muslim and stop messing around? Huh? Why don't you just accept Islam and just get on with your life instead of because, all this messing around? I okay, there's one there's one issue that I have. That's the other issue that we got through. It's the prayer. What about the prayer? Okay. Though we pray being Catholic five times a day still as you guys it's just having to wash and get into the prayer clothes you gotta it, it, it's like wash up and get into the prayer clothes you have to be in the prayer clothes for a woman that's no disrespect to anybody it's just hard for me to like I'm not sure to be able to do that i work in a healthcare profession for one and it's not that i'm always successful to getting into the the prayer outfit to pray to allah does that make sense 
It does, but let me let me explain something to you. I, I'm being for real. No, no, I know. But I'm, I'm explaining something to you. Okay. Um. Right now, the prayer doesn't mean as much as it will. Right now, and so what will happen is when you become a Muslim. Work um, was. I'm sorry. Sorry. So when you become a Muslim, then um, and the prayer becomes important to you, you'll make your moves. You, you'll you'll find a way. More often, you'll be wearing hijab, and it's just a matter of just throwing a a jilbab over you, and you can have an abaya and work with you. You'll find a way. You'll right. Find a way. Look, this is Michael. Yeah, he accepted Islam a couple of weeks back. Uh, beautiful, keep reading, keep searching the truth. Don't listen to our Western propaganda. Bless your heart, Tiger Lily. Shaitan is making excuses. The whispers is real. If you love God, you will submit. And this is Michael. He accepted Islam a few weeks back. Yeah. So if you want to accept Islam, we can do it. I invite you to Islam, what Tiger. Do do? I mean, do I go through a ritual or something or what? Like. No, you, you just you just repeat after me the shahada, and then that's your testimony of faith. We do it in Arabic first, do it in English, and that's it. You're Muslim. That's it. I'm a Muslim. Yep. This guy did it as well a few weeks ago, Nicholas. Okay. When I say that's it, you're Muslim. That's what makes you Muslim. And then once you're Muslim, then you start learning about Islam and then you start implementing the teachings of Islam in your life. And as you do that, you'll slowly change. Uh, they're calling, I'm sorry, they're, I'm listening to you that uh, we have to say in Arabic and English and they're calling me into work. Uh, my co let's do it quickly. Let's do it quickly. My son got in a car wreck. And they're, All right, let's do, it. let's do it before you go. Huh? Let's do it before you go. Okay. Is I mean, I'm not saying this to be rude. Is it going to take long so I can like call them back and let them know? Well, it won't take long. It'll take less than a minute. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Go on then. If I do it right. Ashhad, let's do Arabic first. Ashhadu. Huh? Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Anla. Anna. Anla. Anla. Ilaha. What? Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Huh? Illallah. Ilaha. Ilab. Illallah. Wait a minute. Say that again. Ilab. Il. Can we can we do this over because she keeps texting me and I can't hear anything that you're saying. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me bring my mic down. Ash. Ash. Hadu. Hadu. An. An. La. La. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. What? Illallah. 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 Wa. Wa. Ashadu. Ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammad. Rasulullah. 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 Say, I bear witness. I bear witness. That none has the right to be worshipped. No. That none has the right to be worshipped. Oh, that none has the right to be worshipped. But Allah. Huh? But Allah. Uh, but Allah. But Allah. And, and I bear witness. And I bear witness that Muhammad, that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. Is a messenger of Allah. Alhamdulillah. Congratulations, Tiger. Oh, You're now a Muslim. Yes. Congratulations. Oh. No, for real. Are you serious? Yeah, mashallah. You're now a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Oh. Congratulations. I don't know the, the, the religion that well. The what? Like, I, you'll, I you'll, listen, listen, Tiger. You'll spend the rest of your life learning about Islam. Obviously, yes. Congratulations. Obviously. Thank you. Go see your son. Inshallah. 
All right. Inshallah. So you can pray to Allah to save him if he's any problems. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll speak again. Don't worry. Thank you. Take care, Tiger. Salam alaikum. All the best. Salam. Adios. Adios. Bye bye. Alhamdulillah. You could see that she's, mashallah, she's, she's been in so many streams, uh, all, always in the watching the lives, always watching the lives, alhamdulillah. So sometimes we have to um, show a lot of patience.